I gotta get the cover. What's up? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mark Battles. I'm the CEO and the artist on Fly America from Indianapolis, Indiana. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna take it all the way back. Okay. Because a lot of people don't know your story. Right. Can you tell us how you got into the game? Um. Depends on how far back we talking. How far you want to go back? Let's take it to the beginning because you got an interesting story. Okay. Well. um, I started doing music in high school, basically. And I was still dabbling in the sports stuff. And uh, and then music kind of took the lead and I focused on that. And then coming out of high school, I was with this independent label called Monkey Boy Entertainment. And I was just, I was basically just like the little brother there, you know what I mean, working, trying to do marketing for the, um, for the artist that was a little more established than me at the time. And, um, from that situation, I learned a lot. You know, I learned a lot of, um, just a lot of techniques and, and, and ways to apply myself that I, I hadn't picked up on yet. So um, when I felt like I had a different vision, you know, I just decided to start my own thing and kind of apply a lot of the knowledge I learned from that situation and then apply certain things that, that um, you know, I, I feel like I could bring to the table. And that's when I started Fly America. Okay, so let's talk about your first record. Uh, what was the first record that you know you felt like really imprinted uh, Mark Battles? Um, hmm. Probably say my song with Wale. I did a song with song and video with Wale that was on MTV for a while, and uh, just getting that you know that big cosign from him. And with him standing behind the record and helping us promote it and everything, that's probably what gave me that first look nationally. How did that relationship come about? Um, Be Easy. Be Easy is one of our DJs, and Be Easy was working for V103 down there in Atlanta, and it was uh, it was the BET Awards. And so all the artists was in town. And then, you know what I mean? I was pumping my music out everywhere, and Wale kind of got, got informed it was an artist on the come up that he should pay attention to. So he checked out some of my stuff and I hit him like, yo, let's work. I mean, and we got the business handled and we made it happen. Okay. Now, a lot of people don't know your story, but there's a right. lot of work ethic that, that came behind you. Can, right. can you give us a little uh, history of what all it took to, to get to where you are today? Man, just being consistent. You know, I got 13 projects out and it's, it's not 13 over a long period of time. It's 13 projects in, in four and a half years. So, you know what I mean? I was putting in a lot of work, spending a lot of time in the studio. I've done 10 tours, I think. I've headlined six tours. So just constantly on the road, doing show after show, you know, being in the studio. And I write music for a lot of artists in the industry too. So when I'm not working on my own project, I'm writing music for other people. So just being consistent, man. I remember the time we talked and y'all had y'all was all in the little van. Right. You know, what was it like being on the road and, and you know and going through what you had to go through and moving from city to city? Man, it was tough, man. Uh, I mentioned the the um, the independent label that I was with, Monkey Boy, and Jimmy was the CEO of that, and Jimmy gave me that van. And I was just like, bro, I'm about to start touring, touring and stuff. I need something to go around in. And he gave it to me and just let me do my thing, man. But we was 10 deep in that van and you only supposed to fit seven in there. So you, you think we was going on national tours, driving ourselves 10 deep in that van, sleeping in there, two, three hotels, the whole tour, we washing up at truck stops and then sinks at the venues and stuff. So it was a grind for real. Okay, so it, we take you know everything and paid off for you. So let's let's speed up to the day. Right. You know, uh, what what is the project that you have out right now? I got before the deal out right now, which is just a, um, it's basically like a a celebration, and just um, just something for my fans. You know, something for them to to kind of rally around. You know, because it was my last independent um, project. 
So it, it's called Before the Deal just because that's exactly what it is. It's me right before everything with my deal, you know, came together. And, um, and it was just it was just time for me to, to make that transition. And I wanted the fans to know that the music wasn't necessarily going to change. I wasn't going to jeopardize the roots of, um, you know, how I got to where I was at. So that's what that was about. Okay. So, so who did you sign with? With no ID, man. Um, famous, legendary producer. Uh, he the one that found Kanye West, you know, taught Kanye West how to make beats. So um, he the vice president of Def Jam. So his relationship over there is kind of what influenced me to, to make that move, you know, and also you tie in the fact that he's so accomplished and he's such a legendary person. He was one of my idols before I ever met him, you know? So it was just like a dream to be able to work with somebody that that I studied for years coming up. Okay, so without giving out uh, too much information, what can we expect for you coming up? More tours, more music, some big features, huge features. It's about to shake up everything. And, uh, you know, I, I got a lot of exciting things coming from the fashion side, you know, we about to launch my clothing line. Um, we about to get into a lot of different things, but just plan on 2017. All you're gonna hear about is Fly America. Okay, now let's, let's talk a little bit about Fly America. Right. Uh, who are some of the artists that you may have on your label? Right, well right now I just got one. I just got one, it's this kid from uh, from California, San Bernardino, his name is Jace Houston. He's a singer, he's a, um, he's a rapper. He's a rapper and a singer, but, um, you know, I'm looking, man. I got my eyes open. You know, and anybody I sign, because I have a partnership, will go through my company to the label, man. So, you know, I'm looking to um, to exploit these resources that I have to try to bring something big. Okay. Now, before we go in this interview, coming from Indy, you know, right. it's Indiana. Yeah. What does that mean to you? It means a lot, man. It's it's the craziest most bipolar, most amazing, most hateful, most exciting city to ever live in, man. It's like mixed emotions, you know, when you somebody that's trying to do something positive here. But I never abandon my city, man. I don't even feel like, I don't even feel like anything that I'm doing would matter as much as it matters if I couldn't include Indianapolis. Okay. Now the breaking down the stereotypes that come from here, a lot of right. people feel like you gotta be the ghetto hood thug, you right. know, and you're you're totally not that. Right. So, what would you say to those who who wanna who wanna get into business and and don't wanna have to necessarily go that route? I just know? say, just be yourself, man. You know, I've never been comfortable trying to portray a certain image. Like, I am what I am. You know, I, I grew up in a lot of the same neighborhoods that these dudes grew up in, but I was influenced in a different way. I was always in the sports and in the music, so. I ain't never been in the streets as far as like, you know, like, like banging and, you know what I mean, selling drugs. I ain't never done nothing like that. I lived in the same areas, but I just wasn't interested in that. I always had a vision of me getting out. You know, it was never about, let's find a way to maintain. I was always thinking like, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna stay out. So my mindset was a little different. Okay. So if you had one, one word of advice that you would give to all the trying to up, what would it be? It's consistency. Just be consistent. That's it. And whatever you're doing, if you got a niche, if you got something that people like, drive that home. Don't be afraid to continue to do what you're doing and, and bring the same thing to the table because if you bring in something unique and it's a fan base out there that knows that they can only come to this one artist to get that, you know, that's that's going to create longevity in your career where you're you got artists like Wiz Khalifa. If you want to get into smoking, chill vibe. You know you gotta go listen to Wiz. You know if you wanna, you wanna turn up and party and, and have a good time. You know you, you listen to artists like Two Chains or something like that. So you just find what you're good at and what you, you know and what people feel like you're great at. You just drive it home. Okay. So if people want to get in contact with you or follow you, uh, right. how can they reach? All my social medias is the same. Mark Battles 317, 317 in my name, repping my city. Um, or you can catch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Fly American Music.